see? It's on the gate. Oh shit, hold on, hold on. Keep tapping. The movie, she still did it. Hey! See that? That's good. That's good TV. <laughs> I mean, I challenge anybody to bring a dog to Richard that he can't fix. He's going to get it done. You let him do what he needs to do, it's going to happen. And I think that's just incredible. Um, can I ask you, what... What did you notice that was different about Richard's training and philosophy that you had noticed about, you know, other trainers in the past? What makes him different? What was different? Okay, first of all, he, he the psychology. He knows the psychology of the dog. It's like he knows what those dogs are thinking and like everything that we think they're thinking and that we want to do is the opposite of what's supposed to be. So I found his, 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 his uh, training just fascinating to me. It, it's... Um, it, the psychology of it and understanding what the dog's thinking and it's the opposite of what we're thinking and I, I was just amazed by the the rapport that he has with the dogs and and the way they respond to him and I was fascinated I, I just couldn't get over it. I haven't seen that before and, and I have had different trainers okay. and so that that was the biggest thing for me was I, I was so so interested in his psychology that I keep telling him, when are you going to write a book? When are you going to get a TV show? <laughs> and he, he basically attacked the groomer and I had to jump on the dog and get him away. After seeing that, um, it was evident that we needed someone to come and help us with the dog. Um, <clears throat> so my wife gave the number to Richard Hines. It was the most fascinating thing that I've ever experienced due to the fact of how fast uh, Rambo caught on to everything with within the first class it was 15 minutes and as far as the psychology of what Richard does is absolutely amazing because he could see the dog and if he'll tweak it immediately and you'll see the dog respond to as he's tweaking things immediately and I sometimes ask him, I say, yeah, but what about if the scenario was changed? He'll say, well, then I'll just do this. And we immediately do it. And it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Every time he comes over, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what we're going to do next. And then I always kind of doubt if he's going to be able to do it. And he proves me wrong every single time. I mean, I'm hoping for the day that I can just prove him wrong, but it's, 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 it's not happening. So his psychology and understanding of dogs is a phenomenal uh, gift, if you will. Um, I've seen many trainers, I've seen uh, uh, many videos and stuff online. I, I just, I, I, now that I've watched him and, and understanding the psychology of, that he's taught me at this level, I see these other trainers who claim to be master trainers um, uh, really are embarrassing. Uh, he definitely has a gift that um, is not something you can pull from a book. You can't get this stuff from a book. This is something that it's, it's just a gift that he has. He has that eye, he has that way of thinking that allows him to really work with any case. I mean, I challenge anybody to bring a dog to Richard that he can't fix. He's gonna get it done. You let him do what he needs to do, it's gonna happen. And I think that's just incredible. Hi, my name is Julie and I'm standing in Central Park, New York, the Doggy Oasis. 
And I want to just let everyone know that Richard Hines is the best trainer and behavioralist that I've worked with. Reversing my little one's um, issues, his severe issues. When I move and she still did it. Hey! See that? That's good. That's good TV. Professional said just um, euthanize her. And, um, you know, but it just working with her for just a long time, but finally just going to Richard and spending a month down in Miami and having a good talk with him. He knows what he's doing. I chose him out of everyone in the world because I knew he was a professional, I, that he had it. And so, um, and he understands, every, he understands where uh, the behavior comes from. He knows the right training methods to he uses a variety of them and so he's there's there's no one that I trusted more than Richard and I highly recommend him and her issues were you know you get to the end of these books that are so over published right now all these super pros saying you know this that and and only using one method or and not the other and it just at the end of the chapters they didn't address her issues they just said muzzle manage or euthanize they didn't really give any kind of explanation on how to resolve the issue until Richard. And Richard just knows what to do. So it just cut to the chase, went down to Richard, and everything was resolved. Okay, now Julie here. This, what I'm gonna show you now, will be Julie back in New York, walking through the streets of Manhattan. Now, you saw there that Gypsy, her dog, bit the daylights out of me, right? The reason Julie was here from New York, she tried everything in New York for two years straight. The best of the best behaviorists for two years straight. No results. Julie could not take her out of the apartment and walk her down the streets of New York. Because anybody that would walk by in close enough, Gypsy would grab in the leg and bite him. I mean bite him good. You saw me bleeding there. She would bite everybody and growl and lunge. <coughs> at every single person in New York City. Imagine walking in New York in Manhattan where it's packed with people all the time. You can't avoid people. So she had to put Gypsy on the wall and crush her into the wall and hold her to keep her against the wall so that she couldn't go and bite anybody in the leg because she will bite everybody. That's how bad she was. And the last thing, the last straw, the behaviorist that had been working with her for a while was leaving Julie's apartment and Gypsy came up behind her and bit her in the calf and wrecked that calf badly. Right? And this is to the behaviorist that had been working with her for a while. Gypsy never got even close to being cured. But here's Julie walking through New York City now when she went back for me. So keep in mind. You're going to see people walking there right across Julie and Gypsy, right at Gypsy's nose. Before she came to Miami, that was a leg grab and that was going to be hospital. <laughs> right? So here's Julie and Gypsy back in New York. We're walking through New York, episode three. Oh, 
gypsy. Gypsy cotton. Bacon gypsy girl. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is, he's got a bigger camera than me. Gypsy? Yeah, but I was just shooting video on uh, for somebody to help me rescue her uh, to go on the web. So we've been shooting panning. We're saying hello. Go ahead, get it. Good girl. She was going to get euthanized. Good girl. How about those beans? Thank you. Oh, I wish I had my camera. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> So for the camera person, the, the interviewer, there to go down and touch Gypsy and talk before, it would have been rah, 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 and when it bit the microphone, bit the girl, bit her hands, I mean, you could not go near Gypsy. Not even, don't even think about touching her or going close to her. And then Nick Lachey comes up when they were filming for his show, and he gets down, Gypsy gets up, he pets her before... If he would have even went down, rah, rah, she would have went lunging at him like a crazy <laughs> psycho dog and tried to bite him and tear him up. That is the huge progress and success that we had gotten with Gypsy after she came to me in Miami. No way, no how you could walk her down the street or forget anyone trying to touch her. That would never happen the skills to actually take he trains trainers Richard's trains trainers so he gave me the skills to go back to New York here in Central Park and work with her and work with her to get past all of this other stuff that she had all this other baggage post-traumatic stress disorder everything and she really is a miracle dog and there's I, I really really highly recommend Richard Hines thank you for the past Three years, we've been through four trainers and um, spent a good couple thousand dollars on uh, trying to rectify his issues, which are aggression towards other dogs, um, aggression towards kids, and just anxiety issues in general. I, I tried the same thing, clicker training, reward training, um, over and over and over again um, with no real result. I got an incredibly obedient dog, but no rectification in the behavior issues. You know. And the funny part is, after I had the, the consultation with Richard, I had called my mom and my sister and was like, yeah, this guy says this, right? Like, he says, we'll see, we'll see. I'm willing to spend the money because it's our last ditch effort, it's different than anything we've ever done, let's just do it. And it's funny because <laughs> we see. And I'm just so happy. I mean, I cried the first time that we went to the beach and he could be on the beach with kids and with dogs and he could have fun and we could have fun and I could actually enjoy him like a dog and he can enjoy his life as a dog. This is after two weeks. Jake uh, was a very obedient, aggressive, vicious Rottweiler just a short five weeks ago. Uh, wouldn't let anybody into my home without growling, snarling, biting, nipping. We got about nine people. Now, this Rottweiler here, Jake, this was one I wish I would have filmed this from the beginning and filmed everything. This was one of those absolute insane aggression cases, <laughs> right? When I first got to the house, now Jake had been working with a positive trainer for two years, right? Took him through seven levels of obedience, advanced, extra advanced, as high as you could go, supposedly, right? But then one day he just turned, he turned on everybody. He just went after everybody, lost his mind. Nobody can go in the house anymore. He would bite, every, savagely bite, not bite. He was biting to kill and take out. He lost his mind. Now, the trainer couldn't work with him anymore because she would go to give him a treat and he would go to bite her hand off and he just tried to attack this trainer that he has known since a puppy at eight weeks old, right? So eight weeks old to about two years old, she's been working with him and he just lost, that's it. I'm not taking treats from you anymore. It's on, I'm gonna take the world over. And he went into serious aggression kill mode, 
right? He was only good with the immediate family. Other than that, you walk in that house, you're gonna die. He sees you in the street, which we had done the first day to take him out to see how bad. Woof, I had my suit on, he bit me, held on to the suit in the street, was shaking. I mean, violence. So, <laughs> when I walked into the house for the first time, I put my suit on, and they said, if you come in, and we bring him in from the yard, and we open the door, he's gonna kill you. We're not gonna be able to stop him. I have the suit on, let him come. So he's at the back glass, throwing his face rah, rah, into the glass. I stood by the front door of the suit, and I said, open the door, let him come, and let's see what he's got. Let's see what he's made of. The moment they opened up that back door, he shot across, slid, hit me into the wall, and shook me in the suit. I was banging from wall to wall while he was shaking me violently. His eyes were red. There was salivation like he had rabies. I mean, he, this guy was going to put it on me and his intentions, he was going to kill me dead. This guy was not playing. Now, he bit nine people, you heard her say here. And the only reason it was only nine is because they stopped all social interaction with him because people were gonna die. It didn't matter, he was gonna go after everyone and anything. Dogs, bikes, people, I mean, he just lost it, it was on. So, this, is one, this was one of those cases I wish I would have filmed from the beginning. He turned out fantastic, taking him to PetSmart, all the trainers and, and behaviorists that were at PetSmart that day that worked with him in the past were like, what? You're taking him out into public? You don't have him here. You didn't bring him to PetSmart on the weekend when it's packed, right? He was perfect. She was like, no, he's fine. So the behaviorists, the trainers were petting him. People, strange people petting him at PetSmart while they had adoption day. He used to go after dogs. He didn't go after any of the adoption dogs. I mean, crazy. This is the kind of insanity that my system can help and fix quickly. We tried to uh, take him to other trainers, um, and with little success. He was very obedient, using food, but beyond that, um, this very intelligent, lovable dog inside the home was just mean, nasty, and uncontrollable outside the home. So we heard from a friend who had referred us to the dog, Whisper. Um, really, this was our last ditch effort to try and um, get the dog right. Jake's right, he's all right. He's doing much better. Five weeks into our training and I have a completely different dog. His temperament is different. I can allow people into my home. Uh, he has allowed other people to touch him, uh, to pet him, and to become friends. He's got friends at the dog park now that he visits once a week. He's a way <laughs> different dog than what we had five weeks ago. Perfect. What would you say that is the difference between the, the training when it comes to your previous training and, well, and this training trainer? The training was uh, positive reinforcement using food as a treat. And uh, it worked for um, come, sit, stay, down. But it didn't help him with his temperament or his aggression or his fears. Because really, we learned about the dog psychology in the dog whisperer training, whereas we were just um, rewarding him for good behavior. Now we had to deal with the misbehavior. And were you, how, how were you convinced that, that Richard's training has taken hold? What, what evidence did you see? How did oh, you my God. Well, I can tell you right now, the other night I had two, two Goldens over here, uh, a male and a female. We had like a little dog party. And I've been going to the park. Never in my life did I think I could take him to a park. And he hasn't, he hasn't reacted. He hasn't growled. I was staying at my friend's house a week ago with him. Perfect. It's another male and female. And, 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 and Richard has told me, I've always focused on the males because that's what I saw. But Richard said, it's all across the board, you know. He has a fear aggression, and it's not. It, it, it can come out with the females too. I had just never witnessed witnessed that. So now, 
the do those dogs come over to my house, they come inside, he wasn't upset, they were, you know, all over us, you know, wanted the attention, he was fine. So that's a huge, huge step. I want to invite more dogs over. And going to the park is just like never in my life did I think we could take him to a park. I'm even going to take him to the doggy yappy hour that's starting this week. Really? Yeah. <laughs> to come down from Texas because we went through a few trainers that simply just didn't know how to train dogs. And I watched Richard's videos on YouTube and I knew I was going to bring my dog here. And once we got here, it's like it was in a day he had Max doing stuff that I couldn't even imagine. And now we've been here a week and he used to be dog aggressive in dog parks. After Richard worked with him, he's not. He's calm as can be. So now, before, when you got here, you weren't able to walk him really out in public, right? No, he'd go after kids, and he, strollers, bicycles, other dogs. No, we couldn't. And then here in the park, I think after the first session, he actually stopped going after things and stopped that aggressive lunging. And then from there, we were good up and down the parks with bikes. Kids. <laughs> very long way and he is my service dog so it was important for me to get the best trainer so that I can always keep him and he doesn't get in trouble by doing something dumb yeah and then we were just in the dog pen now children running past him all over the dog to his face you know a few days ago we put a muzzle on him we went in just to test him because you were telling me how aggressive he is in the dog parks so with the muzzle on you know we calmed him down we had a few things and then the last two days we've had him off the muzzle and he's been great in the dog parks with all the dogs no aggression you want a treat baby <laughs> you want a treat yes okay you're share This is unbelievable, but back home in Texas, he would never allow that. Use color. Okay. Children running past him, to him today actually, he's running right. to him, With nothing. So I mean it's actually perfect and he's running around playing. He's I think up. you gauged his temperament. He was more fearful than aggressive. Right. And you picked that up right away, so we kind of got that out of him, and now he has fun when yeah. he goes to the park. No, it was great to see him today. Mm -hmm. He was running around and playing with the dogs and chasing them the first time. Yesterday, yeah. he, he took it all, but today he loosened up and actually went and played. Oh, he's so, excited. Yeah, so he had a great time today. 
Mm -hmm. so. so when we go back to Texas, we're recommending Richard to everyone we know with dogs. <laughs> and tell them that it's well worth the money you spend to get down here. So Lisa, after only two days of training, how's it going? Oh my gosh, what did you do with my dog? <laughs> I'm going to sit here next to you like this close. I know. And him not try to lunge at me, growl at me, bite me. <laughs> I mean, he's like, he's like so relaxed. I can't, I've never seen him like this. Like, it's almost like you traded in. I traded my dog for two different dogs. I've never seen it had such immediate results. That's no, great. Working two days ago, you. I couldn't even come near you. I know. He would lunge and try he, to bite me, attack me. He hated you. <laughs> hi, Lisa. Oh, hi, Richard. <laughs> How are you? Okay, good. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He's really aggressive. He's very aggressive. He did. Now look at him. Now he's, like, calm, he's just so relaxed. calm. And, and so is she. She's like, she's like, they're like, like wanting to sleep. It's like spa day. They're just going to relax. But the thing is, is that, you know, the method that you showed us was so easy. And I totally get it. It wasn't that hard. I, and within minutes, it was immediate results. And even after you left, he was so well behaved, and he he hasn't barked at the door since. Yeah. I'm showing you dog psychology, I'm teaching you about dog, and how their brain works, and how they really work without using too much human interference. I should have anything during this training with you. Most of the things that you're hearing and seeing, have you ever seen before? Never, never. And I, I should have made this trip long ago. I should have like Googled you, found you. Um, I called Richard for Kit um, because he was aggressive uh, toward pretty much everybody in the world. He had three or four people that he liked and I was unable to have anyone in my home at all um, because he does not tolerate people and because he looks soft and fuzzy, everyone wants to touch him and I was terribly afraid something bad was going to happen. Um, we had tried other trainers who did positive reinforcement and it basically accomplished nothing except me spending money to not have my dog behave any better than he had. So Richard came and um, this is our fifth visit and Kit now lets Richard pet him, put a leash on him today and he, I can walk him. He doesn't act aggressively towards people when we walk. I, the philosophy behind it, Kit is a, a whole different dog. He's calm, he's more self-confident, he um, wants to go outside now before he never did, and it's all because he has learned that the world is a safe place as long as I'm here or someone is with him that he's, everything is gonna be fine and he doesn't need to try to get at anyone at any moment. So I, this training philosophy is the only one I've ever used that was successful with, with this dog or any, any other dog. I, I have had several dogs, none with aggression issues, but they certainly, this training has helped make him into a dog who does what I tell him to do when I tell him to do it. So I would, I would highly recommend it. And without this collar, Kit would never, ever, ever be doing what he's doing right now, which is sitting in a room with looking at Richard across the way and being very calm and I'm not doing anything to him. I'm doing nothing. Awesome trainer. He's the best the world has to offer today. Just let everyone know that Richard Hines is the best trainer and behavioralist that I've worked with. So if you're looking for the best, then you need to come south to Miami. That's all I can tell you. And he's a one up. He's a, he's not a one in the million. He's a one in the entire earth of a kind dog trainer. He's the absolute best there is. I've searched online everywhere. There's nobody that compares to Richard Hines. I